Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I am honored that you would take time out of your day to come and watch this really cool short interview clip from Jochen Hemleb about Irvin's camera or cameras. But first, I want to ask if you would please subscribe and also click the little bell that's to the right of the subscribe button so you'll be notified when another video like this comes out. I'm endeavoring to bring you more things like this. I'm not amazed because I've seen it for many years now, but I'm, I'm always excited when I see how interested people are in a given topic. And one of the reasons I'm here to talk to you real briefly before I go to that clip with Jochen is to talk about the occasion, the rare occasion that someone takes time out of their day to write a negative or hateful comment. And so I get those from time to time. And if they're very disruptive or, or truly unkind or especially racist, I, they're, they're gone. And, and if it, the person returns, I block them from the channel. It happens very seldom. However, what the haters do is I actually, in some respects, really appreciate them. I, I, I don't welcome them. I'm not welcoming more of those comments, but they give me an opportunity to look into myself to see if who I am is being authentic to me, to me, number one. And then, uh, yes, to you. You deserve to see something that's not filtered to try to gain applause or adoration, because that's not what I'm after. We're developing a community here, not only of people who are interested in Mount Everest, but about this mystery of Mallory and Irvin. And so that's a positive and beautiful thing. And so what I endeavor to do in my podcast, not just on this YouTube page, but my podcast, The Happiness Quotient, and also my other podcast, Tools for Nomads, is to have there be one part somewhere in there, maybe throughout, that says we respect people, we accept people no matter how different or opposing in their opinions they may be, and we welcome the discussion with those people despite those differences. And so those differences sometimes are a conduit to bring us together with people who can help us see different perspectives of the world. I encourage you to comment and share your thoughts keep it respectful, keep it constructive, and come back often. We're building a community of people brought together by similar interests, and that is a beautiful thing. So now to my video with Jochen, very short clip, and he talks about the cameras that Irvin had. Cameras, notice I said plural, and here you go. Hey, Jochen, so without going too far, quick question about the camera. Um, so um, apparently if they did bring the camera back to Beijing or wherever, they obviously botched it because wouldn't or or at least are holding the evidence if there's a picture of them on the summit with Ruth, the picture of Ruth. Um, is it absolutely a definite what? kind of camera he had. Hadn't you mentioned to me sometime before in a previous conversation that everybody on the team was given a camera? And I don't know if they were all vest pockets, were they? No, no not not really. It, um, they, they had their cameras and, well, now all we can say at this point is there's a statement by Howard Somerville and that's on film. It's in a BBC documentary from the early 1970s when he says, well, Mallory had forgotten his camera, so I gave him mine. And, and supposedly the information is right that this was a vest pocket camera, um, probably a very specific model, but definitely a vest pocket. And that's, that's all we can say, um, but the point, clearly is both Mallory and Irvin had their own cameras um, and were intending to to take pictures on the summit climb. Um, I'm, I like the joke uh, that Irvin in the end probably ended up with having three cameras on him <laughs> because, well, he had his own. The question is, where's Mallory's camera? Um, if it wasn't removed by the Chinese, 
Um, with this new information, the second point uh, can be ruled out, but uh, there was the possibility that at one point during the climb, uh, uh, Mallory had said to Irvin here, take a picture with my camera and, and keep it. And we sort that out when we are back at the camp. So that would have made two. And then there's the diary entry in, in Irvin's diary and it can be cross-checked in, in the reprint, the, the Irvin diaries that he intended to take a small film camera, a cine camera. Um, and I know from, from the, the Royal Geographical Archives where the cameras are listed that were officially taken on the expedition, uh, not the private cameras some members took, but they had a number of very small cine cameras with a roll of film that held one minute of film and it worked with clockwork. And I mean, this is exactly the camera you want to take on a summit climb to record a summit panorama or a, or a climbing sequence. Just a minute of film, clockwork. On, and Irvin has a, a diary entry that he intended to borrow such a pocket camera, pocket cine camera from the stock of Captain Noel. What is not certain is whether he actually took it on the final climb because there is another entry in the in, in one of the camp diaries that after Mallory and Irvin's disappearance, Captain Noel's camera was taken down from the North Call and it is not clear whether this refers to the camera that Irvin wanted to borrow from him or a different camera that he had left up there mm. on the North Call. So, and that's why in Detectives on Everest, I said, well, theoretically, uh, Irvin could have had three cameras on. <laughs> <laughs> he would have made a great documentary pick, pick, filmmaker. Pick, pick one, pick one. 